You are listening to the Fancy Free Podcast, where my guests and I share our most embarrassing, funny stories so that we all feel less alone in our imperfections and forge connection through vulnerability and humor. I'm Joanne Jarrett, and I am your host. And today I have with me a brand new girlfriend, Shantea, who I have been following on Instagram and on her blog, but she is just meeting me for the first time today. Shantea is a mom and a wife and a model. And she blogs at ShanteaMcIntyre.com. Shantea, thank you so much for being with me today. Yay. For thinking of me and inviting me to your space. Absolutely. Well, fill in the blanks. What did I miss about who you are and what you do? I guess an important context part of who I am is I played basketball from sixth grade through college. Oh, wow. I don't really play much anymore. I played Division One basketball. I decided not to go any further. But I think that that is an important part of the essence who I am, part of why I can stay so motivated and persevere through things I don't like to do. Uh (laughs) You learned delay gratification. Oh man, did I. And pain tolerance and all that stuff. Yes, all of the things, all of the things. Yeah, I was a gymnast, not in college, but all through high school and below. And I hear you. Yes, yes. And then (laughs) we're infertility warriors. We've got four children, but we struggle with infertility. And so um, after the first baby, we adopted a son because we really wanted a large family. Well, I really wanted a large family (laughs) and battled with infertility for four years before we were blessed with two more miracle babies. Mm. And so I'm a mom of four also. That is awesome. And how old are your kids now? My kids are 11, eight, soon to be six, and soon to be four. Oh my gosh. Wow. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) My kids are teenagers. I have two teenage girls, so I'm in a different wild and crazy stage, but past the them needing me every moment. Right, right. Which we'll see how often that moment is going to be here shortly. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you hear any of her angels in the background, just be cool and act natural listeners. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's white noise. It's white noise. Oh. Okay. So I have been following you for, I think about a year, maybe a little more than that. And I understand that you recently quit your quote day job to focus solely on your modeling career. Can you tell me about that? I did. Really, I didn't I didn't quit it to become a model. I quit my job because I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Awesome. But coming from corporate America and having a steady paycheck, that really freaked my husband out. And so I worked mm-hmm. a lot to get some supplemental income somewhere. And so modeling was something I did before children. And so I just re-signed with my previous agency before children so that at least I could say I had a job. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, don't worry, honey, I'll bring in some income here and there. At least you have a, you have a potential to do so. Exactly. Exactly. Really. I just wanted to be a mom. That's all I really wanted to do. So it's so ironic. This whole pandemic thing has really tested. Did you really just want to be a mom? Um, <laughs> What'd you but, just do? <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't even leave the house. But it has been such a beautiful journey. I've, I've been so blessed mm-hmm. by it. But yes, yeah, so I do model. Instagram is really paying the bills right now as well. Thank God. But my, my love is, is being a mom. Yeah. And that, sh- that so shines through in all your content. Oh, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Your heart for family and your heart for God and your heart for women just striving towards what really lights them up. I think it really shows through. So oh, I love that. that blesses me. Thank you. That's that's what I tried to do because I feel yeah. like my own Instagram journey started when I was pregnant with my fourth baby. So we got pregnant naturally, adopted a baby, then tried for four years, lots of surgeries, lots of HCG shots, lots of mm. progesterone. If you're in this infertility journey, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and then we got pregnant and we got pregnant with our third baby when the the adopted baby was a year old. And so it feels like we got <laughs> twins. Oh my gosh. And then I got a new promotion, finished my master's degree. And within a month in my job, I got pregnant with a fourth baby, which we <laughs> definitely did not expect. And so I was freaking out and I reached out to Instagram, you know, they didn't know I was reaching out to them, but I was looking for inspiration. Any mom of four who didn't look, she was crying hot mess. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> and so, show me your good I, days. Please. Oh, I was like, I don't care if it's a highlight reel. Just show me your makeup and your hair combed because I can't do this, you know? And so yeah. once I figured out I could do this and I did get so much inspiration from moms who don't know who I am still to this day, I felt like I owed it to motherhood community to then push that back into the environment that you can totally do this. It's just us freaking out and a little bit of pregnancy hormones and all the things, but you can totally do it. Oh, I love it. 
Okay, let's get to know you a little better by throwing a bunch of rapid fire questions at you. If you had 24 hours in your home alone with no pressing to do's, what would you do? I would organize my closet. I know that sounds so sexy, but if you're over 30, that sounds like a really (laughs) nice time. I was like, I can totally relate. (laughs) Okay, if you could rename yourself, what name would you pick? When I was a little girl, I named all of my baby dolls Michelle. I didn't know that, but my mom vividly remembers that. So I think Michelle would have to be top of the list. Also, I think Shantae is pretty cool. I might have spelled it slightly different so that people who don't know me can pronounce it right away. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. I went for really unique names for my girls or pretty unique names for my girls because I had four Joannes on my gymnastics team and that was annoying. Yes. But I also was like, I got to make sure I spell it so people know how to say it because I don't want my kids having to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people had all kinds of. I I got Shantanini, like Shantan. There was a lot of ends uh, recently on a on a photo shoot set. I'm like, come on, girl. You're like, like, that's Shantanini. not even close. Yeah, I'm like, you're just making that up. Personally, I'm Joanne, so I answer to Joan, Joni, Joanna. But you know, Joanini, I would be like, no, wait, where'd that come from? Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's your favorite phone app? Well, Instagram. Gosh, I spend way too many hours there, (laughs) unfortunately. I just started cycling. I like to, in January, make an obnoxious goal just to see if I can do it. And it's, (laughs) I don't know, it's random. Um, I always do something like just that if I actually do it, I'm surprising myself. And so this year, my surprise is I want to do a triathlon. And uh, for context, I hate to run. And I don't know how to freestyle swim. And I just learned how to road bike a couple days ago. And so (laughs) you're athletic and you're ambitious. (laughs) Yes, right. And so my my favorite app right now is my tax app. And that's like a road bike app that I can ride stationary, but still get the simulation of hills and things. Oh, nice. I'll link to that in the show notes for any of you people who are just as ambitious as Shantaya. Okay. (laughs) Nice. Have you ever met a celebrity? One time, this is random, but this is the first thing that popped in my head. We were in Hollywood, just as being little kids and just sort of stargazing, you know, at the literal stars on the floor. And Mm -hmm. little Richard pulled up in a limousine and was passing out Bibles. And I remember he had so much makeup on. (laughs) Even as a man, I was little, probably like 10 or 11. I had never at that point in my life ever seen on a woman or a man. He had so Uh much makeup on. And I remember my mom being very excited that it was Little Richard. And of course, I had no idea who he was. I just remember a lot of makeup and he was handing out books. And my mom was very excited. So, <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. I love it. Do you have a favorite joke? Uh, my favorite joke is knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow Ooh. who? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's cheesy. And I love it. Yes. Well, as you know, the point of this podcast is to tell our most embarrassing, funny stories so that we all feel less alone in our imperfections and that people who may see the polished version of us can remember that nobody is as fancy as they look. So what do you have for us today? My absolute most horrifying to me, embarrassing story. I was 13 and it was probably my second cycle of my life. And I was at a basketball tournament and I didn't want to tell my mom that I had started my cycle again because, you know, I was just still uncomfortable with it. And so I just put a whole wad of toilet paper in my chonies and kept playing basketball. Well, unbeknownst to me, it had fallen out on the court. And so in basketball, when something is on the court that shouldn't be, the referee blows the whistle and stops the game and then goes to pick it up, whatever it is, right? Whether it be a loose ball or a shoelace or a water ball, whatever it is. And so I'll never forget, it was on the like free throw line area and the ref blows the whistle and he's looking at this thing, trying to figure out what it is. <laughs> and then because he's looking at it so confused, now my coach is on the floor looking at it and my coach goes to pick it up. And just before he touches it, he realizes what it is and he like <laughs> erupts in like disgust. Oh, and I remember him, and he's like, who is this? That? Who's that? Of course, why would we at 13? Like, no one's going to claim it. And furthermore, why isn't my coach a woman? Oh, I just wonder what my body language would look like because I was mortified. Oh, and so, gosh. you know, they had to like get a whole crew to clean it up and disinfect like a bomb had gone <laughs> off in the gym. And that was. Oh, hard. Lord, have mercy. They bring in the hazmat team. <laughs> the hazmat team. And it wasn't even a lot of blood because I was 13. And oh, oh, it was. Oh, my awful. gosh. <laughs> Sorry. (laughs) 
Okay, I want to go back and hug 13-year-old Shantaya and tell her, in the future, there will be so many worse period oh, stories. for sure. All the girls standing on this court, every one of them will have one eventually, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And then I want to go to the ref and the coach, and I want to shake their shoulders and tell them to be better human beings, right? be better adults, do better at adulting. Absolutely right. Because mm-hmm. clearly it was one of the girls on the court. Right? Good Lord. You've got these young teenage girls who are embarrassed to be alive. Now they're bleeding and they yes. don't want, like, even like to talk about it. And yes. it's so hard. I remember just thinking, this is it. I already thought life was really hard and now I have this to deal with and yes. I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah. No, it just was like an uncomfortable pastime for me. I didn't really feel like life was over. I just felt like one more thing that's growing up thing yeah. is overrated. Yes. Like that. straw that broke the camel's back. I don't feel like a woman. I feel like an, an inconvenienced yes. human. <laughs> That's about oh right. my gosh, you poor thing. Oh, yeah. So what did you do? Did you just keep playing? We just kept playing. I was almost relieved because it wasn't as much blood as I thought it would be. I was like, oh, we're good. I can finish this game without yeah, backup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what is your most recent embarrassing moment? Or is it too fresh? Don't share anything that you're not ready to laugh about. I think the reason why nothing's popping off the top of my head is because it takes a lot more to embarrass me. But I think what I should be embarrassed about is that (laughs) (laughs) recently, oh, I guess I got two. So I've been starting cycling and my husband is one of those, you don't take baby steps in. So I've got the full gear. I've got like the clip-in shoes and the skinny bike, then the butt pads, the whole nine. (laughs) And um, because he's really into cycling, I should say also. Oh, okay. So he knew how to gear you up. Yes. And part of the reason why I decided to do a triathlon is because I thought if I have to bike, which my husband loves this, and so I feel like I have to at, at some point entertain some sports that he likes, um, yes. then I should at least do something that I want to do. And so that's how the triathlon was born. Ah, uh, okay. So we went on our very first ride and we crossed a busy intersection and I did not clip in successfully and fell very hard oh. on my bottom. And oh. I mean, I felt so good that the the, the chain fell off. Mm-hmm. And I no, had a no. really gigantic purple bruise on my bottom, oh, but no. the traffic stopped and people were jumping out of their cars to make sure that I was okay. And so again, that should have been very embarrassing, but I was more mad at my husband. Like, how come you didn't tell me this was a hazard of riding bikes? Like, you know, I did no research on this. I did not know that I could fall very hard. I didn't know this was a risk. I didn't know I was putting myself in, in jeopardy of no falling idea. in the middle of the street. With all these people around. I thought that if you could fall like going down a mountain. I didn't think you could fall <laughs> starting at an intersection. So, oh, darn it. I mean, yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Well, it showed you the kindness of strangers, right? They were all oh, worried absolutely. about you and checking on you. No, I, they jumped out of their cars quicker than I could even realize they jumped out of their cars. I felt like their shadow was over me. It was, <laughs> and you're like, wow, um, what's happening right now? <laughs> and what did your husband do? Oh, well, he immediately grabbed his video camera. Um, (laughs) (laughs) that turkey oh man oh man he did but then when the people jumped out faster than him he he put it away because he realized i'm probably not looking like the best husband that all these people are concerned and i'm videotaping (laughs) and then he's like oh i should have told you that this and that and this yeah buddy like he's he said a lot of i should have told you's that mm-hmm. I just still don't remember because I was just mad. Like, wait, you there was a list of I should have told you's and here I <laughs> there's more than one. Yeah. <laughs> On the floor. I was just I was just mad. It was a, it was a whole scene. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Sometimes anger supersedes embarrassment, which I think is a good defense mechanism. But the other thing is, you know, when you're a grown up and things happen, it's like well, all you people are so welcome because now when you fall on your face in front of, you know, people at the mall because you slip on the floor or whatever, you can remember this lady in the Absolutely. middle of the road. <laughs> Absolutely. Remember this lady. Oh I know. God. I'm like, how come I've never seen anybody falling off their bike while I'm driving? Like this, this seems like a, a common occurrence, but mm-hmm. have you ever seen anyone just fall off their bike, their, <laughs> their road bike? I'm thinking. I don't think I have. I don't think I have. I know plenty of people who have fallen off their bikes, but I've never actually been present at the moment when it happens. I would agree. Then the next day we went out again and I fell again. But this time, because my husband had, after I fell, he taught me all these fancy hand signals so that I wouldn't fall again. And so (laughs) when he got to the end of the street, he was supposed to do the hand signal for stop. But he said he just assumed that I saw him stopping and 
I didn't. And so then I fell right before we got to the freeway. But this time he was videotaping again because my husband loves to videotape. And so you can hear on the videotape me saying, Mike, what are you doing? Oh, oh, I'm going to fall. And then I just crashed out. And Down I go. <laughs> down I go. Oh, I was so mad. But that's why I feel like it's got to be a little common because, I mean, I was two for two. So I cannot be yes. the only person. <laughs> okay. I think – what are the beginners too afraid to show themselves in daylight or what? Oh, like maybe you're just way possible. more brave than everyone else. <laughs> that's possible. I'm, I'm probably a little stupid to have But I don't – I don't recommend <laughs> – Riding in the darkness when you're a beginner. I mean, I think that's hazardous in and of itself, right? So I don't know where all these people are. But my husband used to mountain bike a lot. And when we were first dating, he fell so bad that he was like covered in road rash, you know, all over. I can remember, I used to think, well, they still are. His shoulders are so beefy. And he pulled his, this was before we had been dating for very long, but I was a medical student at the time and he pulled his shirt down his shoulder to show me this huge road rash. And all I could think was, oh my gosh, look at those shoulders. They're so strong. <laughs> but amazing. he, I mean, he, he used to fall all the time and people do. So I don't know. I think here's, here's what I think. You and I are such careful drivers that we are watching the road. We are not watching the road. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that that makes us extra careful if we're not seeing because <laughs> we are not aware of our surroundings. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes oh us my gosh, I love if it. like someone just like peels over on a bike and we're missing it and you totally not don't notice it. it. <laughs> well, I have been told many times. I waved at you the other day you were driving. You obviously didn't see me. I'm like, I'm That's so amazing. sorry. I'm so clueless. That's amazing. Do you happen to have a life hack that you think the listeners would love? What's something you do that makes your life amazingly easy that you were so excited when you discovered? Something that I just started doing is I call it power hour for my kids. It didn't start off for an hour, but I always called it power hour even before it was an hour long. And they have to stay in their rooms and play or dance or color or whatever it is they want to do, but they know that they cannot leave their room for an hour. And so during that time, I can do whatever it is that I want to do. I can exercise, I can sleep, I can cook, I can whatever it is, <laughs> meditate, I, whatever it is. But I started with just 15 minutes, power hour, 20, and just sort of stretched it out so that they figured wow. out that they could yeah. manage their own lives. And I was thinking just recently, I think I want to stretch it out even more and go maybe hour yep. and a half, hour 45 yep. minutes. It has changed my life because all of them <sighs> simultaneously will leave me alone in an hour for a mom of four with littles is like a golden gift during the day. And my little still takes a nap. So that's not even her nap time. Oh, so she's learning that skill even though she's napping. So she's napping and doing power. Yes. Out. Oh my gosh. Brilliant. I love it. Have you ever experienced a crazy coincidence that you can think of and tell us about? I would say just meeting my husband, actually, because his whole family is probably two blocks away from where my grandparents live. Aww. But we didn't meet until we went to college, which was four and a half hours away from where we both grew up. That's awesome. Yeah. I tease him because I should have gone to a much cooler university than I went to. <laughs> but it's amazing that you let 18-year-olds decide where they're going to study for the next four years. Mm -hmm. Somehow, it worked out that I think it was a little serendipitous that he and I both went to the same college and then ended up being married and, and living happily ever after. I love it. Yeah. Aww. That's awesome. So where'd you go? We went to Fresno State and no shade against Fresno State, but I was accepted to every Ivy League school there was. I had really great GPA and I was good at basketball. And literally, I turned down Cornell and Brown and Yale and Harvard, literally all of those universities. Wow. But I was so afraid to be nerdy because I was already nerdy in high school and I never had to do <laughs> anything. You're like, no, I'm a party girl. Watch me go to Fresno State. Oh, I just didn't <laughs> want, I didn't want to keep that legacy. I'm like, I've, I've lived the nerdy life. I don't want to keep doing that. I just want to see what like, real life people do. I want to be invited to the parties or at least be mm -hmm. around them. I just felt like yeah. Harvard would be boring. Uh -huh. And so I just said, no, straight faced. I don't care how many times you guys call me. I'm not going Ivy League. Wow. And instead, I'm going to go where there's really great football. And at the time, uh, Fresno State was up and coming and their quarterback was David Carr, who made the cover of Sports Illustrated that year. And it said Fresno oh. with a question mark. And I just thought, this sounds like a good place. And their team was good, but not so great that I couldn't play. I was a starter as a freshman. Awesome. And I just felt like 
this is going to be home. And in retrospect, yeah. I'm like, why did I go to a California state school and turn down a free <laughs> education at all these private schools? That was so stupid. But it worked out. You're choosing based on stupid things. Like I literally was looking at the football rosters of the schools. And yes, thinking, yes. How many potential men could I marry on this roster? <laughs> <laughs> I was, and- I was. I had moved from South Carolina to Reno, Nevada, which was basically like moving from the Garden of Eden to moving to the surface of the earth. So I yes, was like, yes. I'm, go- I'm going somewhere green, and that's all I care about. So I ended mm-hmm. up in Seattle, and it was green, but it was also cloudy the whole time I was there. I had visited oh. in August, and it was gorgeous, but I'd ne- oh, I was yeah, never there in true. August again because yeah. I went home during the summer. It's so dumb. Yeah. I, I feel like 18-year-olds should make that decision. It's such a big decision. No offense to any 18-year-old who nails it, but I wasn't that girl. What have you been loving lately that you think the listeners would love to? So first, I love that meme that says, if you own that Britney Spears velour jumpsuit, you need a night serum. <laughs> um, I don't know if you know, but it's <laughs> great. And so I've been loving hyaluronic acid. I know this is probably not what you were thinking, but I definitely had a few of those Britney Spears jumpsuits. I like to use a liquid vitamin C. I feel like that has done quite a difference for brightening. But for plumping, I think nothing does the job like hyaluronic acid. And you can get in a serum or a mask. It doesn't matter. But I think if you are not using hyaluronic acid, I don't care if you're 20, you are missing out. Message me a link what you're currently using and I'll link to it in the show notes. Okay. That sounds good. And that that company will be like, what just happened? No. I know. (laughs) (laughs) We all want to look like Tantea. There's a watermelon face mask that I like. It's like a sleep mask. And I will link it to you. But it smells glorious and it goes on. You feel like you're at a spa and then you get to sleep in it. And then you wash it off in the morning. And it's been really nice. I like that a lot. What is one surprising thing about you that nobody would be able to tell just by looking? I'm very shy. Really? I know. I mean, I'm not uncomfortable talking in front of people. I've definitely mm-hmm. been keynote speakers at a million events. I think that's the basketball in me that got me comfortable doing yep. that. But if I ever had the choice, I would never be in the front. I think part of it is that being six foot tall, I don't hide very well. And so I know that. Mm. Like I don't show up to a party and think, please, everyone just stare at me. But I know that it's going to happen. So I have to Ugh. sort of put on a big girl face, but I would so much rather blend just be in the background and no one notice me. I really would. That's another one of those skills that I'm sure you developed because I'm super shy too, to the point where my mom had to kind of teach me how to talk to people. And now here I am interviewing. She's like, if you'd have told me when you were a little girl that you were going to be so outgoing, I mean, I'm so outgoing, but I'm also shy and I also get worn out, you know? Yeah, if you're an introvert, you can be social, but then you get worn out. So oh, then sure. you know it's you have to really pick and choose what you let wear you out. Yeah, the pandemic has been such a missed blessing for me. I know you know an extrovert won't ever ever understand, but I'm like, yeah. what? There's a max capacity at any store I go to. What? <laughs> Nobody will be close to me in line. I just this was amazing. I, it, it really, I have to stay home, and no one's gonna judge that I've been in my house for the last two months. Like. I am in, in my I, no, a looming <laughs> virus could kill us at any point. And then my husband's a first responder and, you know, oh my all gosh. the things. Yeah. No, but you have to look for silver linings. I feel yeah. like I have told several people that this holiday season was so weird for us, but it was my favorite in a way because mm. there were no social obligations. And where yeah. I love a good party, but after three or four good parties, I'm fried. Right? And then my kids get my crappy leftovers and that's not fair. And yes. my husband. Yeah. I've learned better how to modulate that so I don't get fried as easily. But yeah, if it's automatically done for you, then you don't even have to make those choices, you know? Well, put it all together. I don't have to even pretend Uh for myself. And I think it's interesting to now being that my a big chunk of my livelihood is social media and being extroverted. Mm -hmm. At first, when I started this journey, P.S., I started this journey because, again, I knew that I wanted to be a stay at home mom. And I saw on Good Morning America, when I was pregnant with my last baby, that you could be paid for Instagram. I was like, wait, what? Tell me more about this. Because I was trying to look for an exit plan for my corporate job since I had my first baby. I realized that if the trade was be uncomfortable and share who you are authentically to get the ultimate goal of being home Mm -hmm. with your kids and present with your kids, that sounded like a fair trade to me. And so, but the weird thing is, Sometimes I do forget that I'm speaking to tens of thousands of people. Yeah. 
because it does feel very intimate that I'm just talking to my cell phone. But then I'll see people out and about and they'll be like, Shantaya, how is this? And I'm like, oh, oh my God. They know like, you. People, they, like, they know my details. <laughs> yeah, are like consuming this. I remember one time I was watching my niece watch my stories in my house and I got so overwhelmed because I was like, oh my gosh, there's people all over the world watching me do nothing like that's so weird but also I'm so (laughs) grateful that they do because holy cow if they didn't I couldn't be home with my babies so yes I love it and here's the other thing I think introverts still crave connection and so for me social media has been amazing because it's connection without direct interaction so I can have Mm. more connections and I don't get as worn out do you find that a little bit I I think what social media has done for me is just keep me inspired. I don't know if you guys can relate, but I love to watch the workout videos. I don't always do them, <laughs> but I do feel so inspired watching homegirl do like 8,000 pushups. I'm like, yeah, girl, you did that. And so I think I try to keep my feed with things that are continually inspiring me, even if I'm not moving on that inspiration. Um, that's how I like to leverage social media. What topic or upcoming event or mission or project are you excited about that you don't want to miss out on sharing with our listeners? I always do crazy things at the new year, but also my birthday is in December. And every year I try to gift myself something meaningful and something that what do I think I'm worthy of taking a chance on that nobody else would really back me on? And so 15 years ago, I started a modeling agency on my birthday. Um, and that wow. road, I rode that way for probably 12 years. Well, no, I guess 15 years because I just closed it because I just, I'm ready for the next adventure. And um, I'm starting a clothing line called Change, C H A N J. I called it phonetically. And it's just yoga and workout gear that I love. And I'm so excited about it. And I'm also really working hard to make it a mommy and me line, which you're totally getting the sneak peek of that because I probably won't announce that it's a mommy and me line until about three months after my line goes live. But I'm just, I'm so excited because it's literally things that I love. I could not find an outfit that I wanted. And so I was like, self, because it's my birthday again. I was like, it's time. Let's make this. And so I have traveling yoga mats because I've been looking so hard for a cute one and I couldn't find one. Um, Workout sets with really cute, unique designs. And I'm just really excited about it. So you design these clothes and you're having them manufactured and selling them online? Yes, I am. I'm so excited about it. I am going to be watching change. I'm so excited for you. And that is amazing. Okay, Shantaya, tell my listeners all the places where they can find you. Oh, man. Instagram. Everything is Shantaya McIntyre because I'm really creative. And, <laughs> and so my <laughs> blog is ShantayaMcIntyre.com. My Instagram is Shantaya McIntyre. My Facebook. Um, you know, what is not Shantaya McIntyre is my YouTube because that is a joint adventure with my husband and my family. And that is life with the McIntyres. It was Shantaya McIntyre, but my husband did not like that. And so <laughs> we changed that a little late in the game to life with the McIntyres. I love it. Okay. Well, I am going to spell Shantae McIntyre for you guys, just in case you're somebody who doesn't like to look at the show notes. It's C-H-A-N-T-E-A-M-C-I-N-T-Y-R-E. And I will link to all the places where you can find Shantae in the show notes. So, oh my gosh, Shantae, thank you so much for being with me today. This was a lot of fun. No problem. So fun. Okay, that was fun. Wasn't Shantaya adorable? I loved her humility and her sense of humor. Make sure that you check out the show notes at fancyfreepodcast.com slash episode 99 so that you can get all the links we discussed today. And make sure that you check out Shantaya's new line, Change. Next week on the show, we have Lise Helslut, who is a new friend of mine that I met on Facebook in a walking group that she hosts. And she is so much fun, you guys. She made me laugh right out loud with her life hack of all things. It's so great. You can't miss it. Come back Monday. Make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you listen so that new episodes pop into your feed. Whenever they're available, we go live every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Mountain Time. And then there's often a Wednesday or Thursday episode as well. If you want more connection, laughter, and sharing, join the Fancy Free Facebook group. The question of the week this week, of course, is have you ever seen anyone fall on their bicycle when you were driving? 
I have one big ask this week sometime when you're chatting with a friend and you think maybe they'd like the Fancy Free podcast, tell them all about it so that we get the show into more ears. Have a great week and remember, no one is as fancy as they look. 